Cherith, it seems to me that we've got a lot of Christians who have some concept of God the Father and some concept of God the Son, but they're not quite sure what to do with the Holy Spirit. And so they reduce it to what I've heard you call binatarianism instead of trinitarianism. In other words, we there's two people, two persons, not two persons in the Trinity. And, and just like, where does the Holy Spirit fit in this? And what's the role of the Holy Spirit? What do you want to say about that? Well, the first thing I want to say is that the Spirit is God. So the minute we make the Spirit the force or some projection from God for us, then we're not reckoning with God. And that's where I love the language of the Nicene Creed, which will, we believe in one God, the Father, and one Lord, the Son, and we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who is worshipped and magnified as the Father and the Son are worshipped and magnified. And I think, well, where, where are we living that kind of life with God, the Spirit, who is with God, the Father and the Son? I, I get very struck by the fact that in Acts 19, 18 and 19, like Paul's got this lovely friendship that he's been living in Corinth and hanging out with Priscilla and Aquila and a bunch. And, and then he heads off um, back to Jerusalem. And while he's gone, Apollos comes along, right, and becomes a follower. And Priscilla and Aquila hear him. And then they take him back to court. That it says they just took him back to, to just teach him a more adequate way, a little fuller sense, right? And then they don't really hear like what that is, except they hear him preaching about Jesus. And then there's something that's not right. And then Paul says right after that, Paul comes back through the space that this has all been happening. And it says he meets some believers and he's like listening to them and they're talking about Jesus together. And it's like, what baptism did you receive? Which is like a weird question out of nowhere. So you hope they've had weeks of conversation or days of conversation, but he's picking up that something's funny. And they're like, well, we received John's repentance, John's baptism for the repentance, for the forgiveness of sin. And he's like, what about the spirit? Like, we don't know anything about the spirit. <laughs> Boom, now we're in the land of evangelical Christianity, right? Which is like, wait a minute like i don't just need to ask for forgiveness of sin so god will forgive me and accept me and take me home he wants me to live the life that he's made me for and he made me to be a child whose own breath that is not just oxygen inhale it it's that i breathe god the spirit so that I can see with God the eyes of God in the world and speak with the voice of God and hear the voice of God for the sake of the world. That there is no way to become a true human child of God apart from God. Not as a moralist teacher who I have to remember, but as God who's speaking and drawing me to the one who now has lived that life within for me and died everything that's killing me, right? And, and the Father who has loved me into being and is calling me for like, all of that is only possible to be united to all of that through the one who has always been Emmanuel, who is the Holy Spirit, God with us. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the Spirit hovered over the chaos of creation and the Lord and giver of life with the Father and the Son is the creative agent of everything, including new creation. I'm born of the Spirit. I can only live the life that looks like Jesus' life, which is to be my life, the same way he did, which is by the power of the person of the Spirit in his life. And then when Paul begins to talk later about, well, this is the spirit of God or the spirit of Christ. And sometimes it's in the same sentence, like he's the spirit of God, spirit of Christ. And you realize, oh, well, of course, it, 
they are God. This is God in simplicity, all the same character, all the same way of being for us and with us. But it it's unique in the sense that for God to be God with me this way, always the love that the Spirit pulls me into is is the love that is Jesus also present to me. So we were talking earlier about the fact that we come from a tradition that talks about Christ in our hearts or Christ in our lives or Jesus in us or us in Christ. And I think that is by the Spirit, that Jesus who is still human and isn't like sometimes being in a human body and sometimes like cosmically disbanded all through the cosmos and living in little people's hearts and my son who didn't want to accept Jesus into his heart because he was very worried that Jesus would get very lonely in this dark little place inside of his heart. He's like, no, let's let him stay out where it's like light and fun. And it's like, no, how could, how could it be Jesus in my heart? I go, because Jesus is one with the spirit who is one with my father in heaven, who asks me to call him Abba, which I can only do by the spirit because I have a brother who's made me one with him in now I know what a child of God looks like and I'm a co-heir. All of that requires God to be triune in our life. And so I come from lots of church backgrounds where I meet people who are what we could call binitary instead of triune. It's like bi. So we've got father, son, or they really are deeply Trinitarian. It's just that they've thrown out God the Spirit and replaced it with the Holy Book. So we don't have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We have Father, Son, and Holy Scripture. And then the Spirit is trapped between the pages of this text. Or if he's like let out when you open that up, then he's like my conscience pricker or he's something. But this is not God. And so in other traditions, I'll be like, well, that's the shy member of the Trinity who's just pointing to Jesus. I'm like, really? Like at creation, like on Sinai, like raising Jesus from the dead. Like, I, I think it's God. 